Hey, Power Appers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In this first video in our series on Power Pages, we're going to walk through the creation of the site as well as the tools you'll need for the rest of the series. So stay tuned. Power Pages allows you to create web portals and allows your customers to interact with your data through your applications and through your portals. It is a, uh, a, a, a sequel to uh, Power Apps Portals, and it's now its own product inside of Power Pages. So if you want to create a website quickly that allows your customers to interface with your data, then Power Pages might be the answer for you. So in this first video in our series, we're going to walk through creating a new site and uh, how do you develop against that site. We'll have uh, future videos where we actually build our data structures and actually show the data and all that. But want to kind of break this up into nice finite chunks here for you. So let's begin. So for, to start with, we're going to go to make.powerpages.microsoft.com. This URL that you're seeing right here. This is the URL where once you're here, you'll select your environment in the top right. Oh, sorry, let me get rid of that. There we go. We'll select the environment in the top right, and this is where your website is going to live. An environment equates to a development, QA, and production environment, and it originally came from the rest of the Power Platform, like Power Automate and Power Apps. So they've taken that same concept over to Power Pages also. So we'll be using this one environment here. You can also create a development environment if you wish. Just go ahead and select that word environment and pick the one that you wish. The only one you want to avoid is the one that says company name, maybe like this, it'll say company name, and have the word default in it. You are no longer allowed to create sites in the default environment using Power Pages. So they, they, they strongly recommend not doing that, and they'll actually prohibit you from doing that in the future also. So once you're here, you'll see a create a site button up top, and you can click on that to go ahead and create your first site. You'll notice there's a, uh, a slew of templates that are already here for that have complete application examples. So if you want to create a registration for an after school program, just click on that button right there and it will create a site, the database, and everything you need to make that work. In our case, we're going to select the default design studio. We'll choose this template. It'll ask us what do you want to call this. We'll call it like project uh, orientation. Give it a good name like project you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put my name on it. Oop. <laughs> BK, I'll put my name on the initials of this URL. This URL has to be unique across the entire Power Pages family. So make sure you don't, you don't want to name it exactly like I'm naming mine right now. And once you're all done, hit the Done button. Now, that will take some time to create. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Back button here and go back to my main Power Pages. So you want to go ahead and hit the choose button and done button and you're off to the races. I've already created one in my case. For a brand new environment, this might take up to 45 minutes to create. And you'll get an email from Microsoft when it, once it is done creating. Uh, your environment might be a little slow while it is creating, while it's installing a bunch of solutions for, for to support the Power Pages platform. So once we've done that, we'll see something that looks like this. Uh, for your second site in a given environment, this may take only five or 10 minutes. It's just that first site where they have to install all the solutions for you. All right, so I've got my project origination and the app that we're going to build this week is going to be for uh, having our, our vendors bid on different applications, bid on different uh, projects that we want done at our fictitious company. So we're going to put a, a, a project out there, like a new laser printer we need, or a new headquarters, or maybe security. We have all these little RFPs, requests for proposals out there, and the vendors are going to log into the portal to submit those, those, uh, those bids for that project. All right, so once you get, a, get back a trial like, like this, uh, just note that you can always upgrade it from trial to full-blown release later. And if your, uh, uh, if your trial expires, you have not lost your work. You can delete it and recreate it. As long as you can point to the original site, you're gonna be in good shape there also. So a question we get asked oftentimes is, can I connect to a different domain? Like right now I've got uh, projectorigin.powerappsportals.com. Uh, yes, you can actually customize this domain right here just by clicking on that next step right there. 
But in our case, let's go ahead and preview this and see what it looks like. I'm going to start by hitting the edit button here. This is going to open up our power, our, our power pages editor. We did a little while to get used to saying power pages. And you'll notice this is going to be a little bit WordPressy, if that's actually an adjective here, where I can go through and, and make changes to this and just type in the new, the new uh, uh, headline, for example. Uh, your buttons can be easily, easily changed here by editing the button. So lots we can do inside of here to kind of customize this. So we can say something like, you know, welcome to the vendor portal, something like that. And then it's off to the races. As soon as I click away from this, watch what happens. If I make a change, all right, I'll call it like PW Vendor Portal. And when I click away from it, this saved button for big changes will go from saved to saving to saved again. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to kind of like, there's no save button per se yet. Uh, you'll also see there's a preview button and a sync button. The sync button is used if we make some changes outside of this tool and we want to get those changes that we made outside of the tool into the tool. For example, you may have created a new table uh, in a solution outside of this, or you may have changed, made some kind of massive change to security or whatnot. If you want to bring it through, just hit the sync button and it brings those through. It is not needed unless you make changes outside the environment that you want to bring into the tool. Lastly, you can hit the preview button right here. It'll ask you, do you want to do a mobile preview or a desktop preview? I'll do my desktop preview here. And it's going to open up the app and show us our new our new headline up top. It's a pretty nice looking app, uh, uh, web portal for, for, for a template, isn't it? And after we do that, we can go to our pages. Now we can customize the look and feel. Like right now, a lot of people are, are cringing when they see this orange and blue right now. Uh, that's my gator colors uh, from, a, from a Florida resident here. But uh, unfortunately, it may not be your cup of tea. We can always change that though. Additionally, you'll notice when I go to sign in that presently there are two authentication providers turned on. We have Azure AD, and I'll show you where you can add more to this later, but right now just Azure AD. And we have a custom provider, or an internal provider right here, a local provider, where users can create their own login uh, to our site. We also have the ability to make it a private portal by giving users uh, invitations to join this. We can turn off all the buttons you're seeing right now. So if you wanted to turn it off, we can we can kill this, for example, and we can even kill Azure AD. We can also add others if you wanted to as well. So I'll show you where you can do that. But for the time being, I'm going to click on Azure AD, which for the first time I do this, and only me, it is going to request for permissions to create a resource in Azure. So once I click on this, it will say, and only the first user that does this will get this, this piece. Uh, we can also you know, consent on behalf of the whole organization, but if I hit accept, it is going to now create the resources inside of Azure for Power Apps portals to read the Active Directory. The same thing would have to be done for each of the other login providers you want. The first time you do this takes a few seconds, but what it happened right there is when I hit Azure AD, it created an account for me and transferred my AD information over to here. So we'll see that under Manage External Authentication, there is my, um, uh, Pat, my Azure AD link right now that I have in place. We, a, a person can also change their profile and can customize the languages that are seeing right now as well. All right, so the goal of the series is we're going to create probably four or five new pages. Once we're doing like insertion of data, for seeing the projects that you want to bid on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we'll get into that in our next videos in our series, but let me show you how we can manage this portal and some of the tools you're going to need around this. The first thing we'll notice is when I go back to our portal designer that we're in right now, uh, that we can go ahead and make changes. For example, under main navigation, we can add new pages right here by hitting the little plus button right here. And this is going to open up this little pane that you're seeing over here. Now, we're not going to do that for the time being, but you'll see that you can actually customize this. As a matter of fact, let's create one page. Let's call this um, uh, Your Bids. Oop, I have a Your Bids. I'll make it a start from a blank here. We can also make it a page if you wanted to as well. And when I do that, I'll hit the Add. And we're going to see a Your Bids section in a moment right up here. 
We'll also see on the left side here as well. So there's your bids right there. And we can start to add things like headers and footers. Now keep in mind, I did not add a page. So all I get is this little header menu up top. If I added a page that was a, was a, was a link of a page, it would have gave me a header, a hero image, and some content I can change and all that. But now I'm ready to go ahead and add things like Power BI reports, you know, list for data and forms to enter the data, as well as you have buttons and text and all those kind of things here as well. So we went ahead and created that, but what else can we do on this? So in the, your page, your bids here, if I hit this little three dot and I go to page settings, it also gives us the ability to change the name and change the partial URL here as well. There's also the ability to lock this down where you're only able to see this if you're part of certain groups or maybe you're authenticated in. I'll show you where that, how to do that later when we get to our security section. Additionally, uh, you, can, you can make pages private here or I can move them up or down inside of my area you're seeing on the right here. If I want to hide certain pages, I can hit the little three dot here and I can say, yeah, I want to go ahead and delete this or let's move it to other pages so no, where nobody can see it. I'm going to go ahead and delete mine because I don't really see anybody really using this. I'm going to delete all the sub pages as well. This is the one I'm deleting right here, the one that, that underneath pages right here. And when I select that, it will delete my pages and all the sub pages. I'll leave my contact one, but the same thing can also can apply for hiding pages as well and adding new sub pages. All right, now that we've done that, that's our pages section. Underneath that, we have our styling section where we can customize the style. Like for example, if you don't like that orange that you're seeing here, you can look at that subheader and we can change that with a quick color picker and point to some other kind of color like this light, this light blue color and then you can hit the save changes. And you can also see a, a background here of what the primary buttons will look like. Let me make that also teal as well. And we're off to the races. So this is way, way easier than what we had before uh, in the last uh, interface. Uh, you'll notice there's site navigation. We have that little orange color. So again, if I don't like that, I'll, I'll, I'll discard that as well. And when I hit save, we'll now see that application now in place over here. Now, if you want to see the changes that you're making, each time you do that, you want to hit the preview button. That is, that basically means it's going to flush the cache and reload the cache to where it gets all the latest changes you made. You can also wait for a period of time and eventually the cache will expire as well. All right, next, under data, we can actually see the tables that are involved in this website. Now, eventually, you'll be able to create these as part of a solution, but for the time being, I'm gonna have you in our next video create the tables outside of this environment and only maintain them in this tool here. But previously, if you're familiar with Power Pages, you've had to hop around and go to all these different tools. For the most part, we're gonna stay in two tools now. The last one down is our settings area. Here's where we'll see all the authentication providers that we can turn on and off. Like right now, we have only Azure AD and local sign-in. If I click on one of these here, we can actually disable that local sign-in to prevent people from registering there as well. We can also go to authentication settings and say, hey, are we allowing people to have external sign-ins? Are we allowing people to authenticate? So we can make it a anonymous portal. This does not have to be have login credentials inside of here. The first time you do this, it does take a few minutes, so we'll go ahead and keep on going while we're, while we're doing this. To do that, I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this. It's been more than five minutes, so I might be able to see, there we go, I'm seeing your bids. I'm also seeing that the new blue color, which is equally a bad color, but I just wanted to kind of show you some examples of that. And I see the page that we created. Again, I waited more than five or so minutes, and now it's showing me that these, these new tables are here for me. All right, let's go back to our, our environment again where it's still uh, doing some stuff here. But notice all the different providers. Oh, let me kind of zoom in here again. All the different providers that you have access to. Things like Azure AD and Azure B2C are two common ones you're going to see for internal portals. And the B2C might be for external portals. Uh, one I see commonly is also Facebook as well and Google as well. But you can add, there's a lot of other providers that you can add, and you can also add your own providers if you wished as well. Meaning that if you have a student information system and you want a single sign-on, you can do that as well. This process, unfortunately, this button I clicked on might take it five minutes the first time I click on it. It's basically creating some objects inside of portals, and that takes a little while the first time. Subsequent times I click on the authentication uh, 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 settings there, it'll be much, much faster. So we'll keep on going. Additionally here, let me just kind of clone this page here so we can keep on moving. We'll see that lets me clone it. Here it goes. 
So while it's doing its thing here, a few of the things you can notice here, you have a little three dot here where you can access things like portal management. Portal management is where we'll do all of our advanced settings. And you also can access the flows here as well. Portal management looks a little bit like this. And it's going to be, it's a tool that we'll use in our third or fourth video to do things like file attachments and those kind of things. It's a model driven app where we can go through and see what language we're supporting, what the default language is, what other languages we have supported here. We'll also see our list of our data, our forms to enter the data, which are right there, and then also advanced forms as well. So we'll add each of these. And as we add forms and lists to the other site, they'll show up here as well. But for doing things like advanced forms, which are like wizards, we're going to have to come back to this portal management tool. Also, for some things like security at this time, some pieces of the security puzzle we'll do here also. So it's a little bit unusual, but uh, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make it through all those. All right, so now, as I go back to here again, we also have the ability to do things like uh, site details, which gives us a lot. We'll have to go to the admin center for that, and then also the admin settings. You can make progressive web apps. Progressive web apps are where, where we can basically make the app an offline app, and your users will see it as a tile on their iPhone or Android device. And then lastly, you have table permissions, where we can go through and set how do you access, how can one access that data? What permissions are they going to see? And then lastly, if I go over here, you'll see my authentication settings are still set there as well. So hopefully you got a lot of that this kind of starting point of this video. The goal of today's video is just to get you going on how do we how do we see all the data and what tools are we going to use. In our next video in our series, we're going to build the data structures where we're going to store the data in for the rest of the series. So we're going to start by creating a solution and then adding our tables to our solution. All right, our example that we're going to build, by the way, is a project management system. So this is a common example I see for, for companies all over the place. So this, this is uh, one of our uh, things that we do at Pragmatic Works. We have a ton of videos, of course, on our YouTube channel. Hope you subscribe to those. But also we do things like hackathons where you want to have private training with your own data instead of my examples here. Additionally, we have on-demand learning and we have boot camps as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe so you can find out when we have future videos like this on Power Pages. Have a great one. Bye-bye.